What's up, party people? This is BQ, and this is the Impact Lounge. Please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Whatever platform you're listening on, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Play, YouTube, please hit subscribe. This is the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. Little bit of a surprise for you. This is something we were uh, cooking up for a little bit, and Adam has an interview, had an interview with Eli Drake. We didn't put this out there. We really wanted this to be a surprise for everyone who's uh, loyal and listens to us. Whenever we upload content, whether it's an interview, review, whatever it is, this is an excellent interview. It's about 18 minutes. So hopefully we're going to get him on later in the future, but this is really, truly is an excellent interview. I think you're going to enjoy it. And, um, without further ado, here is Adam and E. Lie Drake. Tonight, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by a very special guest. He is the namer of dummies, the perpetual motion machine of badassery, the defiant one himself, Eli Drake. Good evening, Eli. What's up, man? How's it going? Fantastic, yeah. So so where do we find yourself this evening? Um, I'm in uh, sunny, beautiful Los Angeles. It's not even the evening over here yet. I think it's, uh, what, maybe 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Or, no, I'm sorry, it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, I've still got a lot of day ahead of me right now. Yeah, well, it sounds like you're having better weather than over here in Scotland, where it's snowing yet again. Anyway, we didn't, we didn't call to uh, talk about the weather, and uh, we're going to get on to uh, talking about impact in, in a little while. But before we do, uh, not many uh, of our listeners may know that, but you've actually been around on the wrestling scene for quite some time. Uh, so, yeah, do you want to tell us about your early days, starting in 2002? How did you get into the industry, and who were your influences and those kind of things? Well, you're, you're getting your information from uh, uh, Wikipedia, obviously. I actually started in 2003. 2003, uh, right. Okay, sorry about that. No, it's good. It's, it's funny because I always see that. And actually, I think I even went to a signing one time, and these guys made up uh, – uh, they made up 8 by 10s for me, and it said uh, debuted in 2002. I'm like, nope, didn't do that. Uh, but, no, I started in uh, Heartland Wrestling – in uh, Cincinnati in 2003. I remember I actually started on uh, March 17th was the day I first started training, which is the one, eight, one year anniversary of my favorite match ever, which was The Rock versus Hulk Hogan. It was like bringing my, my early childhood together with like my high school favorite in the dream match. So uh, talking, talking of The Rock, you know, a lot of people say that they see a lot of influence uh, in, in, in your style of promos and those kind of things. Um, uh, one of my co-hosts said as well, you know, he just wanted to check, you know, with regards to the influence of someone like Percy Pringle or uh, Paul Bearer, as most probably people know him as. Uh, what kind of influence did he have on your career as well as The Rock and people like that? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I, I, I would definitely say that if you're looking at who, who influenced me as far as promos or my style or whatever, I definitely, I model myself after the guys who, I, I guess as far as being a wrestling fan, I was always a front runner. I always, lo- I, I always loved Hulk Hogan. I loved uh, Steve Austin and I loved The Rock uh, and then Ric Flair later on. Um, so those are the guys that I always want to model myself after. So whether it's the style in the ring or the style in, uh, you know, promos and whatnot, promos are always very important to me because that's, that's what's going to sell my character to people. Whatever I do in the ring, uh, that is an important part of what I'm doing, but the more important part is connecting with them on, a, on, a, uh, on an emotional level. And some of that can be done in the ring, but a lot more of that can be done on a microphone. Um, and so I would definitely say, yeah, there's some rock influence in there. There's some Austin influence. There's a little bit of Hogan. It's tough to kind of tie that in just because of the way that he would do things. Um, but there's definitely some flair, and there's definitely a little bit of Jake the Snake that you'll see creep in every now and then. Uh, just like all those guys that you mentioned there, um, I would say that both of them have had successful spells as both, you know, face and, and face, face and heel. So far, we've only seen on impact, really, I suppose, the bad guy in you. Is that something that you'd like to see develop as you go on? You know, maybe moving more into that, uh, not full baby face, but certainly a crowd favorite for the right reasons, as opposed to, uh, for, you know, the guys who are cheering you because you're the bad guy. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I've always seen my, like, my character's kind of a tweener in a sense. Um, it's, it's, it's somewhere in the middle. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm the bad guy, but I'm like the bad guy that you kind of like a little bit. Um, it's funny that you say that, though, because I'm always told you're, you're the eternal heel. Nobody will ever take you as a baby face. I'm like, ah, I'm not so sure about that. Um, but who knows? Uh, who knows what's, what's to come around the bend? 
but I do know that everywhere I go, man, I'm telling you, I, I, I hear those those chants, the Eli Drake chants start coming up. Um, so you never know. Yeah, absolutely right. And, and you know what? Uh, my daughter has one T-shirt, one wrestling T-shirt. Well, she has more one T-shirt, one wrestling T-shirt, uh, and it's yours. So there you go. You should feel very proud of that one. Uh, she does uh, like to, nice. to, to do the, the hand motion as you, as you get introduced each week. So uh, you got... <laughs> Uh, and you know where they can get those t-shirts? ProWrestlingTees.com slash Eli Drake. And also at the uh, Shop Impact. <laughs> Just a little plug there right quick. <laughs> yeah, uh, spoken like a true worker there. Well done. Uh, yeah, so so uh, obviously at the moment uh, there's been a bit of a change with regards to the your character moving forward. Obviously, uh, Chris Adonis has left. So how do you see that kind of uh, progressing on screen, those kind of things? Have you already got plans on, on how that's being written out and, and, and also what you're going to do next uh, with your kind of career in, in Impact? Well, I mean, I, I always loved the dynamic with Chris. I, I At first, I was kind of opposed to it. I didn't think it was going to be a good fit. Uh, but I think as we went, we kind of found our groove, and things were pretty good. Uh, but as far as with him leaving now, it doesn't really change much with me. I'm still going to kind of do my thing going forward. And uh, my thing at this point is uh, how do I embellish the character more? How do I make it bigger? How do I add more energy to it? Because if I go back to what I was saying earlier as far as uh, Rock Austin. Uh, Flair, Hogan, when you watch anything they did, whether it was in the ring, on the microphone, wherever it was, there was so much energy behind everything that they did. Every single move had such a deliberate act to it. Um, and and that commitment is what I'm looking to, and I know I already have that in what I'm doing, but I want to make it even more so. Uh, and I want to exaggerate all that even more so. So that's pretty much where I'm going with what I'm doing going forward. Now, just just picking up on that, how do you think you can achieve that? Do you think it's something that you have to do with regards to the matches, you know, maybe upping the, the move set or the, the impact or, or, or the flair of it? Or do you think it's more to do with the, the way you present the character, with the, the people surround you, the storylines? What, what, what do you think can do that for you? It's presentation, because honestly, if, if you look at, again, same guys, Austin Rock, Flair, Hogan, and none of those guys had really super extensive move sets. It was just the way that they moved, the the commitment in their movements, and the um, the intention behind what they were doing. You felt like these guys were fighting. It like uh, like a lot of what I see now in the indies and and on TV a lot of times is guys doing really choreographed Cirque du Soleil kind of crap, and 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 that's fine. And I think there's a, there's maybe a, a piece of the audience that enjoys that and there's a place where it fits uh but if i'm gonna watch a main event i want to watch two guys who are fighting i want to watch two guys who are going at it not guys who are gonna flip and do a bunch of stuff around again i'll, I'll throw in a flip every now and then um but it's got to fit it's got to make sense where it is um but at the end of the day i want it to look like a fight and I, I, just to pick up on that, I think you, you, you're spot on, you know, certainly your program at the moment with Austin has much more of a feel of a fight to it than it did with, uh, say, someone like Johnny Impact uh, over the coming weeks, so, the previous weeks, I should say. So so on that note, then, um, who do you think is, is going to be the best kind of guy on the roster at the moment who can provide you with that platform to, you know, to, to deliver the, the kind of presentation that you want? Is there anyone other than Austin Aries, who's obviously who you're in a program with, but is there anyone that you're talking to creative about and saying, do you know what, I could really do something with this guy, for, you know, from a self-promotion point of view, if nothing else? Well, I mean, we, we've talked here and there about, like, what we could do and who we could do it with and stuff like that. I, I think it's just... Uh, you just you, you need a strong baby face. I'm, I'm trying to figure out who exactly that might be offhand. Um, I, I mean, we have plenty of them. It's just a matter of again, you, you got to find that energy, and the, the baby face is really the one that has to drive that energy. I, I can I can only reciprocate. If I'm coming out there and I've got all this energy, and my baby face is uh, not matching it, or maybe even you know if they're not quite matching it, I'm going to be the one that's taken on the spotlight, which is fine and to a degree, but at the same time, it's going to kill the babyface dynamic. So I, it's, it's kind of a tricky thing. So I just got to, you, you got to find the right, the right fit as far as that's concerned. Cause I mean, again, if you look at an Austin rock feud uh, or, or even a Hogan and macho man feud, there's so much energy going into all that to where it's like, hell man, like, like 
like these guys are just, it's almost like they're competing like they're literally like obviously they're working together but they're almost competing with each other on an, on a energy level um just as far as like just again the way that they're presenting themselves and they they almost want to be they want to stand out more than the other guy, which I think that we all do to some degree, but I, I think the guys almost lose that in the moment while we're out there because they get so into working with each other. And it's more like, let's, let's, let's still compete. Uh, absolutely. I, I think, you know, for, for me as a fan, you, you've hit the nail on the head there. Uh, I do worry that maybe there isn't someone who is that baby face at the moment in the company. Maybe Austin Aries could play it, but once again, he's he's maybe that shade of grey as opposed to being, you know, pure white. So, I, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where you go with that one. Now, now obviously, you, you, your mind there, the way you're talking about these things, you, you're heavily involved in the direction of your character. So how have things changed over the last year? Have you had more input with the different regimes, you know? Uh, are they quite receptive to the things you bring to them? Well, yeah, I mean, of course, as, as you gain seniority, there, there's always a little bit uh, a little bit more weight that you can apply to things. Uh, although at the same time, it's, it's, it's pretty much still just, you know, I, I'll, I'll present some ideas, uh, some they take, some they don't. Uh, for the most part, I'm just kind of going in and, and, and what they have the idea to do, they, they show me a direction they want to go in, and, and I go in that direction. Uh, but of course, yeah, I mean, as, as you go on, you, you get a little bit more weight and leverage uh, than I had like a year ago, for instance. But, but then again, you got to figure once I started to get a little bit of that when we had the old regime, because you start to gain a little bit of seniority with them. But then all of a sudden, this whole new regime came in. Uh, but it's, it's definitely uh, it's definitely on a better level now to the point where I have very, very, very uh, open communication with everybody right now. Right. Obviously, going back to your title win. Um, it, it didn't come out of the blue uh, in, in so much as, you know, uh, no one knew who was going to win that, that uh, Bound for Gold uh, match that you were in. How soon before that match did they tell you you were going to be the guy to take that forward? And, and was it a surprise to you? Uh, well, actually, I just decided that night. I said, no matter what you guys say, I'm, I'm going over in this one. So, uh, no, I, 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 don't, I, I don't remember exactly. Um, but I do know that um, I will say I wish there was a bit more of a build um, as far as me getting to that point because it almost felt like it – it felt to me anyway like it kind of came out of nowhere um, because I, I feel like I'd kind of been middling for a while, um, which that can be fine if then I can start to get a little momentum and then I roll into the gauntlet for the gold and I come out with the title. Um, so from that aspect, I just wish I would have been given a little bit more legitimacy in the sense of let's build this. Uh, cause to me, it just kind of felt like, um, it just kind of felt like it was out of nowhere at the same time. Don't want to look a gift towards the mouth. I'm very appreciative of it. I love the fact that I got to do it. And I think that I made the most out of it. Um, and then, you know, what a five, six month uh, title reign. Uh, I, I think I definitely maximized my minutes as they say. Um, but at the same time, I just going in, uh, cause it almost felt like, I, I, you know, you, you read Twitter and I hate all that BS anyway, but sometimes you read the stuff. Yeah. I started getting that Jinder Mahal thing where it was like, they'd, they'd be like, Oh, well, all of a sudden they just, and that was kind of how I felt in the sense where I was like, okay, give me, give me a build. Let me get some momentum. Like, you know, when, when you look at any great character who, who really, makes their way to the top, they, they can usually build some momentum. You look at the build with, again, on Steve Austin. You look at the build with The Rock. You look at anything like that, and it's like there's such there's such momentum that's gained in the process so that now, finally, when you get that title, it's such a, it's such a payoff. It's damn near orgasmic, as opposed to, I will say, I did like the element of surprise in a sense, except that we weren't live that week. Because uh, I think that a lot of people probably did expect that it was either going to be Johnny Impact or Eddie Edwards that would win the match, and not me. I think I was probably the least expected. So that element of surprise, I think, was cool. I think it still would have just been good if I'd had some momentum going in. Absolutely. Just, just the comments that you said there, you, you maximized your minutes, and I think that's something that, that was very apparent. Every time you're on screen, you did uh, yeah, shine. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a fan, you know, I, I generally thought that. Uh, overall, I think that 
you're only as good as your opponents during the rain. And, and I think sometimes there, there was a bit of a sidetracking. So, so do you think that your second rain, which will obviously come at some point, do you think that that will be surpassed the first one? Uh, I mean, you, you never know. Uh, you know, it depends on the, the, the crop of guys I've got to deal with and, uh, and to mess with. And, but I mean, right now, I mean, it's, I, I, a lot of people who are on the outside are talking about, you know, people leaving and this, that, whatever, but that's the nature of the business. You've always got people coming in. So wrestling is a revolving door. And so I do like the fact that, again, there's always a, a fresh crop of talent. So there's new people coming in, there's people going out, there's people returning, all that kind of stuff. So, um, I, I, whether it'll be better, I can't say that. Uh, I would like to believe so, uh, but I'd also like to believe that Santa's going to come down my chimney on December 24th. I, I don't know for sure. Uh, but I can definitely say it's going to be unique uh, because, again, you've got different talents coming in. Now you've got Brian Cage, a guy who actually I've got a decent amount of history with. So uh, that's something you could work with. Um, but that also depends on how the audience is accepting, things like that. So I don't know. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. I would love to have some guys who can really work the mic, who I could have some good, uh, some good, uh, I guess, matchups with as far as that's concerned. Because if we can talk them into the match, that makes everything else so much easier. Absolutely. And uh, I appreciate we've only got maybe you know, a few more minutes with you tonight. But, uh, you know, this, this has been a this great interview so far. And then hopefully we can carry on some other time with this. But I really get into some of this. But, uh, yeah, so you mentioned Brian Cage. That was going to be one of, one of my final questions. Uh, you, you've got obviously quite a lot of history being in a feud that uh, went off quite some time and also in a tag team. So uh, are you looking forward to maybe mixing up with him? Or cause we haven't heard him on the mic yet. Um, is he a guy that think do you think that can take you to that level? Or is he just a, a guy who you want to physically match up with? I mean, I, I, I see, I, I haven't seen him cut any promos in a long time, so I'm not sure. Um, but I will say that just from the, the history standpoint, I think it'd just be really cool to, to tangle that up again. Um, uh, especially just because I think that we've both grown so much, well, hell, physically with him, as you can see, uh, and uh, and just as far as the way that we work, the way that we do things in the ring, um, I, I think we're uh, we're different beasts in a sense. So there's a level of familiarity there, but I think at the same time there'd be some things that like, oh wow, hey, I didn't know you did that. That's cool. Um, so I think we definitely put some some cool things together. Uh, with regards to your future, I, I take it there's uh, no plans to, to join the, the revolving doors, you put it. Uh, your, your future's with Impact for the time being? I'm sorry, say that again? I'm just saying your future's with Impact for the time being. There's no uh, other promotion out there that you're thinking, do you know what, if they gave me a shot, I'm going to go for it? Well, look, I, I'm a businessman first and foremost. So if, if the money's right, I'm open to anything. And my, my contract comes up. May 31st, everybody. So uh, anybody who's out there, if you got the right money, I, you know, my, I, might, I might have some time to talk to you. Who knows? But as for now, as far as I'm looking, uh, impact is where I am. It's where I'll be. Um, and I, I do have a certain level of loyalty there. I've got a lot of friends, um, things like that. But I am not opposed to talking to anybody about business for sure. OK, well, uh, I hope you do stay with Impact. A huge fan here myself, as you said. And, but wherever you go, I'm sure you'll be a success. Uh, thanks for your time this evening. It's, it's, it's been awesome. really has. Hopefully we'll get you back on the show when uh, we can get a good half an hour with you and those kind of things and dig a bit deeper. But for the time being, I'll let you get away. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll catch you at the pay-per-view in a couple of weeks. Good night for now. Sounds good, man. Yeah, man. Cheers, Eli.